uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to uh, share my presentation. Can you see the presentation? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Clear, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. So thank you, Shurunjana, for the nice introduction. Uh, thank you, Principal Sir, uh, for the uh, very uh, motivational uh, speech. Uh, really, I am totally agree with you and I'm totally agree with the whole department of botany. Botany department is my department. So, uh, so thank you all. And thank you the organizer uh, to arrange uh, this seminar. And also uh, definitely as an alumnus of the department of botany, Shurnath College, I'm very proud to be here today to present my talk. So let's start. So today I am uh, going to talk about the importance of developing soft skills at an early career stage and, who, and how uh, this helps you to grow and get success in your career. So let's start uh, like with our first day at college. So when uh, we, as an undergraduate student, get into a college, uh, we want to engage in our learning. We want to complete our degree. We want to build and maintain a successful career. And ultimately, we want to make a difference in our own life, as well as in the society for the greater good. So, and I think, uh, so this is the way uh, an undergraduate, uh, undergraduate students think when they just uh, get into the college. However, like, and then when we just enter the college, we imagine that as an undergraduate student, that our path and our journey to our goals uh, will be smoother. However, in reality, we, like uh, many of us, face academic, physical, mental, uh, emotional, financial, uh, situational, professional challenges. And most of the time, uh, many of us, actually don't know what, which direction we should go or uh, what will be our support system, then what are our strengths and weaknesses. Uh, in short, uh, we just don't know what are the strategies to overcome the challenges. So what should we do? We actually have to learn the some of the strategies by which we can actually uh, overcome the challenges. So there are several strategies uh, to overcome those challenges. Here today, I am giving you like uh, three strategies by, by which you can start implementing when you would have just started as an, your college as an undergraduate student. So the first one is you can design a proper career path development plan. Then you must keep the right mindset for learning and development. And then you can develop proper skill set to deal with the challenges. And as I have said, and 
the department, uh, the, all the faculty from this department and principal sir already has said that, that as soon as possible, you have started gaining those strategies or gaining those skills, you can uh, reach your goal, reach to your goal easily. So today's talk, uh, I actually have uh, I, I have arranged today's talk based on the uh, different strategies, like the strategies I have just showed you, uh, the three strategies. And I will first, in first part of my talk, I will first uh, discuss uh, briefly the how the development and the importance of the first two strategies. And my in my second second part, I will discuss the importance and development of soft skills with special emphasis on uh, the soft skills. And here I want to tell you one thing that for the sake of the time, uh, today I am not able to give you all the soft skills, uh, like individual soft skills picture. So I am going to give you a snapshot of two individual soft skills. And all the strategies you can see here they are backed by research and my own training and classroom teaching experience. Let's start with the first strategy, like the importance and development of this strategy. And so how to develop and or design your career path development plan. So uh, think about uh, your trip. So when, suppose you are in Delhi and you want to go to Manali, what do you need first? You need a roadmap so that you know where you are now, uh, where you want to go and how to get there. So the career path development plan is actually a roadmap of your career so that you know where are you now what, what are your goals and how to achieve those goals. So the importance of developing or designing this career path development plans are like, as I have said, like you can determine what type of skills you need to develop to achieve your goals in your career. Then you can think about the support system and ask for help uh, you need. Because as I have said, the challenges, sometimes we don't know to whom we should go, like who we should ask for help, because we have, fa we, we have faced many challenges when we were uh, the undergraduate students, especially in my case, I have faced uh, like a few uh, challenges. And definitely I should mention here, uh, the whole botany department, my faculties uh, were my support system. And still well, many of them actually are my support system. So my professors are my, were my support system in Shurinath College in the Department of Botany and they are still my support system. And the final or the most important thing of this career development plan is that sometimes in the life we have to go to, to we have to take detour so but if you have a plan like from delhi to manali and if you just go to the amritsar for some reason uh, sometimes we have we we need to go right but still we can reach our goal we probably may take the detour but we will come back and reach our goal so those are the importance of developing or designing your career path development plan. Okay, let me show you little bit in little bit details that uh, what are the steps that how you can design your career development plan. So the first step is self-assessment. The second step is career exploration. The third step is setting goals. And the fourth step is after setting goals, you must implement your plan. And the most important thing you can say, this uh, 
designing steps are cycle actually. So why it's a cycle? So this is the important thing. Please try to remember this. It's a cycle because when we are designing each steps, we are actually kind of assuming, right? Like we can do this, do that. We are talking with our support system, like our mentors and professors. But it's your responsibility to come back and revisit every step of this plan repeatedly. And you have to reflect on, you have to think that whether I'm doing right or wrong, or do I need to do the, some improvement, or should I just take, or take out some extra point of this plan? So that's why it's a cycle. You have to talk to your mentor, you have to talk to yourself, and then definitely you can revisit these steps repeatedly until and unless you are reach you are reaching your goal so the first step as i have just said that first step is self assessment step meaning like you have to assess your own skills values and interests let me show you what i mean so values, values are like, what do you care for? For example, you want to help the society. So how you can help the society? You can spreading your knowledge, right? You can talking, you, you, you can talk to your peers, you can talk to the outsider you, with your family and you can try to spread your knowledge. You can volunteer in a garden, like botanical garden, and you can talk to uh, the other people, like the uh, normal people, like how, uh, like what are the plants and what are the importance of these plants like this. So, so you are spreading your knowledge, what knowledge you are acquiring or you have acquired. So ultimately your value, you are, you are valuing the society's need. Then the second point is interest. Like what do you like to do? Like you want to discuss the science with others. You want to discuss the, your subject with others. So those are the interests. And skills. Skills is like what you are good at, like what abilities you want to get or you want to acquire or what do, are you good at. Example, you, want, you are good at communication skills or you want to be good at communication skills. So communication is your uh, like you want to get uh, communication as your in your skills skill box or skill box toolbox. So after identifying your own values, interest, and skills, your next uh, step is to check check that which careers you are best fit for. That's why you can see. In my first, in my this slide, I am, I have written the feet word in red. So you need to check which careers you are fit for. After that, when you have chosen uh, probably two or three careers, you are thinking that these careers will be good for me. So you must read about those careers. You have to talk to the people who are already doing great in this career, as well as you have to go to the additional events to get some info, the like informations. And you have to then decide or make a final decision, like which career, probably out of four careers you have chosen in the first uh, step, you can take out two, like take two out and then you can definitely uh, like go with the other two career. Next step is step three. Like now is the time to set your goals for and definitely always keep plan A and plan B because sometimes your, your plan A can be like, like, like may, might be failed. 
So that's why you can uh, definitely say, set plan one and plan, uh, plan one and plan two, and definitely try to set your goals by using the SMART strategies. So here are the SMART uh, acronym of SMART, like specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So you have to use these SMART strategies always when you are setting your goals. Now the, we are at the final step. So is the action time. So now you have to take the action. And definitely you have to take the action, meaning uh, you need to complete your own project that you are doing right now. Then you have to take uh, care of your future career. And obviously one important aspect of these steps I want to mention that identify your mentors. So talk to your mentors, talk to your professor, talk to your teacher or other experts because a mentor can only provide you the professional and personal guidance all throughout your career. Like what I have said for my college professors. So and definitely Obviously, you have, they can, because as, as I also, I have said you to revisit or reflect or think about your every step of the uh, this career planning document. So how you can uh, revisit those or how you can reflect on those because you are talking to your mentors. They are actually helping you to refine your steps or refine your goals so they are your support system so please keep it in mind that you have to have a mentor or mentors so here are some resources i am giving you to check to get an idea like how to design a plan so those are uh, the resources you can uh, just go and check like how to design uh, your career plan and you read some uh, like papers or uh, articles on that. Next move on to my second strategy which is like how to what are the importance and how to develop this growth mindset like the right mindset for learning and development or learning and success. So why I am mentioning the growth mindset or the right mindset for learning and self-development? You need to develop that because there is a relationship between your mindset and the success. So we always think that our academic and our professional uh, success requires that what we are learning, what subject we are learning, uh, how we are learning, what type of support we are getting during our learning. But it's not the only point. The point is like, what is your beliefs about learning and your self-development? So what is your belief system? So try to talk to your belief system, try to talk to your own mindset. And, the, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this in detail uh, for a few, uh, for next few slides. And definitely here, I want to mention that, so this mindset, because the mindset makes a difference in our life. Like we always see that a successful people is doing, are, are doing that, but Yes, the successful people are doing that, but what they, what are their mindset actually? So we need to know the what what the mindsets are uh, of a successful people. So mindset, as I have just said, that mindset is a belief. So it's the belief that directs the way we handle the situation, the way we shot out like what is going on and what we should do. So let's see, like, as I have said, like mindset actually makes a difference in our life because after, 
what mindset or what belief you are having in within you it actually impact your action your action so minds there is a there is a relation between your own mindset and your own action like how you handle the situation it depends on what mindset you are having so that's why i am actually uh, like putting some emphasis on the mindset so mindset and action just remember these two things and definitely that's why like you have to develop the right mindset to uh, for learning and success like here i'm uh, giving you a picture like because sometimes we cannot uh, like fight with the challenge right we cannot fight the uh, the uh, like the things or the uh, situation uh, come uh, to us so that's why if we cannot direct the wind we can direct our action with the help of our right mindset so we can adjust our self so here i am going to show you some uh, scientific data so uh, i like over uh, uh, yeah three three decades ago uh, like uh, a stanford university psychology professor uh, Car professor carol doeck she has actually spent years studying the human belief system and the success so how the human belief system actually uh, have impact on the success and then she coined a term two terms actually like fixed mindset and growth mindset so a fixed mind a person with a fixed mindset they think that their basic abilities intelligence and talents are fixed right they cannot be changed so if i cannot do this means i cannot do this but no the growth a people a, a, a person with growth mindset they think that their ability and intelligence can be developed with effort learning and persistence so just say don't say i cannot do it say i am i cannot do it or i am not doing it uh, but i will do it so here are some uh, here is a uh, here is a book uh, written by her so if you read this book or if you just uh, uh, like read this book you can have like how she has uh, studied this human belief system and the relationship with the success so let me show you like what i am saying uh, that what are the like how this growth mindset and fixed mindset uh, actually make a difference in our life or how they have uh, uh, how how they impact on our uh, success so let me show you two examples like here i know that this is a text heavy slide so but i wanted to keep this slide for you guys so that you can see like uh, what are the characteristics or tendencies of a fixed mindset uh, person and a growth mindset person so suppose like a fixed mindset um, a person with fixed mindset they when they face challenges they just avoid the challenge from the next time but with a a person with a growth mindset they embrace the challenge they learn from the challenge then suppose effort so when they uh, a person with a fixed mindset they put some effort and then if they fail first time they just run from the uh, failure or effort they don't put extra effort on that but definitely uh, a person with growth mindset they actually put more effort and they see that how much they are putting the effort or if they are persistent in their effort they can actually reach the mastery they can be ultimately successful
And this is the study uh, Dr. Toek and her uh, colleagues have done. Like as I have said, she has been doing this study like for probably last 30 years. So here I have summarized a few points. So suppose uh, you can see like how these two different mindset have two different impact in the area of learning and achievement. For example, like if uh, if a to like a person with a growth mindset, they are actually motivated and engaged in learning. But with a fixed mindset, they actually care so much about looking smart. They are actually going for the number. I am not saying that grade is not important. Grade is important, but you can improve your grade by having the growth mindset. You just have to put more effort. That's all. That, like when our parents in our childhood days were still now, when they are saying just practice, practice, and practice more, we just uh, like we, we, we get irritated right? Oh my God, they are continuously saying us, read, read, and read. But no, probably you have to read, read, and read. And then, <clears throat> like, uh, like, let's say, like how they are reacting to the failure. A person with a growth mindset, they say, they see the failure as large mistake. And a person with growth fixed mindset, they feel like, oh, I'm stupid. I, I cannot do it anymore. But it's not the truth. Like we all we all know these things. I, I have to say, we all know those things because our teacher, our professors, our parents are saying that. But this is the study, this is the research. So what they are saying, uh, they are they have the wisdom. Our professors, our teachers, our parents, they have the wisdom. And Dr. Doek and her colleagues, they are actually proving those points by doing their real research. So let me show you a research example. So what here we can see, uh, this is a, uh, here in this slide, I'm actually showing the relationship between the my mindset, like our two mindsets and the neural mechanism like actually what is actually happening within our brain, right? So here, here uh, you can see uh, her colleagues, Dr. Doek's colleagues, Mojar et al. They have proven that uh, with the electrophysiography and electro, uh, they, are, they are doing some brain research. And they are show, showing that uh, when a student, like they are measuring the electrical activity from our brain, like how a growth mindset and fixed mindset student actually confronting and when what is happening within their brain when they are confronting an error, right? So here in the left-hand side, you can see a fixed mindset student, when they confronting an error, they are actually run out of the uh, problem you can see there is no brain activity is happening here, right? They are not engaged with the error. They just think that, oh, oh it's done, I'm done. But when growth mindset students, they are confronting an error, they are getting some feedback. So their brain are on fire, like so much activities are going on within their brain, right? And then they are trying to process the error. They are, they are actually engaging with the error. They are thinking about the error, okay? So this is the difference uh, between a student, uh, like between the students with growth mindset and fixed mindset. So let me show you another uh, research. That's like, uh, this is the relationship between the growth mindset and our plastic brain. So what, um, what do I mean here, like plastic brain? So plastic brain or changeable brain or moldable brain. So our brain is just like a muscle. How you can use that? It's just, it can grow, it can change, it can make new neural connections. So suppose here you can see 
like when we just practice or read uh, uh, read an article first time our neural neural connections are not that much strong but when you read this the same article second time our neural connections are getting stronger and read read and read practice practice and practice our the neural connection of these neurons are getting much stronger and when you are just uh, probably try to remember probably six months later your whole whole like whole connection like all the neurons are getting fired with the same time so you can remember the thing you can apply these things so your study so here that's why here i am showing a different uh, an, an, a relationship between growth mindset and plastic brain so what growth mindset tells growth mindset tells us practice practice and practice some more and our plastic brain is actually changing growing and making new neural connections with rigorous practice to so to summarize with growth mindset you can face the challenge you are putting your hard day work you and you practice more and your brain is actually getting smarter and stronger. So here are some strategies I'm giving, like how to build your growth mindset. And this is a very, uh, and what I have said, just the, those are like very interesting studies. So if you want to read, you can read. And definitely uh, they are like these strategies are uh, I was, uh, this is a comprehensive list. There are more strategies. I'm just giving here nine strategies. And definitely here, one thing I want to mention that always ask for feedback. Like whatever you are doing, ask for feedback from your classmate, from your professor, from your uh, mentors, and learn from this feedback. Because sometimes we avoid feedback, don't avoid feedback because sometimes uh, positive feedback or the constructive feedback, I'm going to talk about this later, will help you to actually develop your growth mindset. So I'm going to talk about the positive or constructive feedback just uh, after a few minutes. So now I am in the last part of my talk. So in this part, I'm going to talk about the importance and development of skills and soft skills. So and this is our third strategy, right? Remember, like developing proper skill set is our third strategy uh, to overcome the challenges we are facing. So here I am actually giving you a simplified uh, scenario or simplified view of an undergraduate student and what they uh, actually do to get their dream job and uh, to maintain their career. So you can now remember, like you, you have already designed your career development plan. And here I'm just showing you uh, what you have done for your career designing plan or career development plan. So after doing all these steps are, um, planning all these steps, you get your dream job. And you have to, you, you just don't want to get your dream job. You have, you want to maintain your dream job, right? You want to be ultimately a successful career professional, right? So this is your kind of path from, uh, as an undergraduate student. And here you can see like skills, uh, is an unquestionable uh, factors, important factors that you need to keep it in your, your mind. So what are the skills? Like skill is an ability to do an activity or job well, especially because you have practiced it, right? Probably in my talk, you can uh, hear one common word I'm continuously saying, and that is the word is practice. So 
broadly, there are two types of skills, like hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills you, are, you need for performing your technical job. And soft skill is actually your personal habits or traits that shape how you work, how you are interacting with others, how you are interacting with your own. Because many times, like most of the times, we say like in how we can interact with others but like there is a like a like a like less time or uh, we cannot actually say uh, like how we can interact with us right so i think one one uh, aspect of your life like how you can interact with yourself okay so soft skills actually uh, give you those um, ability, like how you can interact with yourself, how you can interact with our others, and how you can uh, make your uh, work uh, like positively and productively. So here I want to say one thing, like uh, when we uh, acquiring our hard skills, we actually uh, putting much effort or more energy to build up our uh, hard skill because we think hard skill is important for career. Yes, it is important for career, but we actually spend all our energy to build our hard skills. But here, like uh, soft skill is actually like when you really want to have a professional successful career you have to have the combination of both skills like hard skills and soft skills because this because the hard skill you can see it helps you to perform the technical job technical star, task but soft skills help you to improve your work performance and productivity it helps you to enhance your relationship with others because if you have the soft skills, you can talk with the people in a more relevant way. And then you can definitely create a positive work environment. So here, that's why I'm saying you that soft skills balance hard skills to enjoy your work and succeed. Let me give you two scenarios so that you can understand what I'm actually saying. So suppose, you are a student in lab. You actually have a good hard skill and you perform your experience, experiment, like you can use your microscope, lab techniques, PCR, or any machines very, like you are well versed with this, right? You are very good at it. You can like use the software, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, right? So all those are hard skills and you are very good at it. But this is, the, this is not the only point. You have to, when you are a student in a lab, you have to write your report. You have to write your lab notebook. You have to present your experiment. You have to give a oral presentation. You have to like share your notes with your classmate. You have to uh, like collaborate with others, right? So, and then, when you are, uh, because we have different subjects we have to read as an undergrad, right? So we have to manage our time to handle all the subjects so that we can uh, put the, t like spend the time and energy in the same way uh, on, on, the, uh, on every subject. So that means you have to do some time management and definitely you have to work with integrity. Right? You have to handle many data. So those, the, those are the things they are actually come under the soft skill. So you can see from here that how the soft skills, like developing soft skills are actually balancing uh, the hard skills and uh, you can be a like successful student. And then here I am showing the scenario too, because now in this 21st century, situations are changing. So we are actually handling like so many information. 
our research work, our uh, experimental works are changing. We are now incorporating like more computational uh, stuff. Like we are doing like our, like we are every day, we are actually bombarded with thousands of in information. And right now in research, we are collaborating with other labs because interdisciplinary research is one of the most important thing right now in this 21st century. So that means, and, and employees like employer are asking for the employee who can handle all these situation, all these uh, tasks like collaboration, communication, as well as lab research skills, everything. So they are actually asking for an employee who have all those skills, like both hard skills and soft skills. And definitely we can see, like if we just embrace our soft skill, then they can balance with the hard skills. And we, if we have both, then we can have more healthy and happier career. So let me show you what actually happened when employ, uh, like employer uh, is going to choose an employee. So suppose during the in candidate selection, uh, employer can see like these two guys have same publications, same teaching skills, same research skills. Okay, so they have chosen these two series. Now, at the time of interview, they are actually giving much uh, like importance on the soft skills because it's hard to select them from their hard skills, right? Because they are actually same to same. So they are actually interviewing and they are asking some behavioral questions like how and they are trying to judge how they are communicate, how they are collaborate, how they can handle the project. Okay, how, how they are flexible, like because as I am saying, the situation is changing. So if something come up, how an employee can actually uh, handle the new situation? Are they flexible or they just want to uh, do in the same work situation? If something come up, something challenging come up, they just run from the challenge. So these are the uh, skill set an employee wants to see within them, uh, an employer wants to see in the employee. So as Peggy Claus said, like soft skill get little respect, but this will make or break your career. Now let's look into the, what is actually happening around the world. How the different universities and organizations are actually helping students to develop their soft skills. Because students are our future employee. So they are our future, like uh, future worker, right? So how they are uh, uh, trying to help their students to uh, develop their soft skills. So here are, and universities are playing a great role here. So here I am giving you some examples, like some universities are actually embed the soft skills into program curricula or academic courses, like uh, Dr. Shuranjana uh, said, like this is the course I have taught at UCLA. So this is a course where we are actually uh, teach our students, undergraduate students, how to collaborate with others. And then uh, they have the ample opportunity. This is a 10 weeks course. And they, the students, our students have the ample opportunity to actually practice the strategies, right? To, to uh, imply, implement these strategies into their life, right? Into with their classmates, with their peers. So they can, they are not just uh, learning the soft skill, they are actually developing the soft skills through practicing those strategies in this course. Then universities, like there are uh, so many researchers, uh, they are actually trying to research on the importance and values of soft skills. And 
universities like many universities are running like interactive workshops and guided trainings so that students can develop the soft skills like how to write the resume how to write the uh, cover letter or how to uh, like uh, how how you can manage your time how can how you can manage your stress etc so here i am going to give a comprehensive uh, soft skills uh, uh, like list of soft skills so but for the sake of the time i am just going to focus a few slides uh, on these um, two soft skills and and i want to mention here one thing that uh, like whose life skills and other organizations 21st century skills and other um, employability skills are overlapped with this list so now i am at the end of my talk so definitely we am i'm going to give you a snapshot of these two soft skills so this is the communication skills so as we have saying like communication skills communication skills are actually the skills which you which you need to develop not for yourself but for also the organization you are going to work with so this is the ability you use when giving and receiving the information then there are some imp imp importance of this com um, developing the effective communication skills because by communication is actually like you you are like going to understand the and you are understood the others and definitely as i have just said like you can get hired promoted and be successful in your career there are three types of communication skills broadly written verbal and non verbal and you can see like those are the uh, different types of professional documents where you have to have the an effective communication skills because those are the document like especially here like like job application document where this is your first impression to your prospective employer so you have to send a clear message about you so you need to write a good cv or resume and definitely email email is another example where you have to have an effective communication skills then this is the like the a uh, example of verbal communication so you have to have the verbal effective verbal communication skills during your oral presentation when you are speaking publicly and then when you receiving and accepting the feedback and definitely when you are doing the networking so those are the example where you have to have your effective communication skills and then the last one is not the last one but the another important one is the body language right so actually we don't know like we don't realize sometimes that but actually through body language we actually communicate 55% of our messages so for example like we are doing the eye contact when we are giving the oral presentation we need to do the eye contact right and then your as uh, like listener will know uh, like you you your listener will know that you are actually paying the attention and then facial expression is another example of body language and what are the consequences of lacking the communication skills like if you if you like don't have the communication skills conflict will be arised in your within your team so you as you cannot understand others you are not be understood you you won't be understood by others so definitely conflict will arise then you there is you can be a failure in an interview then your poster or your paper or your oral presentation might not be accepted and your scientific paper might be rejected if you don't have a good communication skills so here for the sake of the time i'm just giving you one like like a, a few strategies for presenting an oral scientific presentation 
so first consider your audience and meaning like just think about like to whom you are going to present who are your audience like undergraduate graduate public uh, scientific community who are employer then structure your presentation meaning uh, just design organize your um, like all the necessary document like necessary uh, stuff in a logical way like first start with the title then give the background then give the um, research uh, like the, the question you are addressing to solve the problem and then results met methods results in this way then quality of the slide must be good because you have to adjust the color and the shades of the slide and then you have to like annotate your figure properly then you have to have good content in your slides. Like you have to do uh, good research or literature review to present your slide. Then delivery of the presentation must be like poised and uh, like similar paced, and it must be understandable by others. And then definitely you have to give some uh, uh, take home messages. Okay, my last skill is, uh, teamwork and collaboration. So uh, here, like what is teamwork? When we work within our group to achieve the common goal is teamwork. Then when we work between the between two or more groups to achieve a similar goal is uh, to achieve a common goal is collaboration. Example, when we do group study, making and sharing notes with the group, group project, etc. And the collaboration skills is as are the ability to work with others toward a common goal. So those are the importance of collaboration. Like we can save time, we can share our knowledge and skills and our perspective. We can improve our oral communication. Then consequences of lacking collaborative skills. So if we don't have the collaborative skills, like effective collaborative skills, we our const, uh, collaborative projects are getting delayed, they are not productive, and ultimately the collaboration is terminated. And during collaboration, we are facing some challenges, like sometimes like uh, team members are multitasking, they are not actually listening to the speaker, they are not flexible if some, if, if some members have some um, like uh, emergency, they are requesting for changing a time, they don't want to change the time. And definitely our like most important challenges is like we are afraid of having feedback from others. So I'm just giving you the strategies like how to provide the feedback. So here you can see, like I, as I have said like few minutes earlier, like you have to give positive constructive feedback. Let me show you what I'm actually saying by constructive feedback. Constructive feedback meaning like you, first of all, you have the positive in intention because somebody is asking for your feedback means they actually really try to improve themselves, right? So just don't say your writing is bad, right? Be specific and be positive. And also the main thing, is trying to help them to figure out that which part of their writing is actually needs to improve, right? So you are giving the feedback to others for their improvement. So here you, you say like your effort is writing was good. However, you can improve it by learning some vocabularies or learning more articles or reading more articles. So be specific that the area of their weakness, like identify the area of their weakness and help them to improve that area. This is called constructive feedback. And definitely accept the feedback. So uh, your feedback is matter. So definitely listen to the feedback. Don't get irritated at the beginning. So be aware of your response, be open-minded and reflect what your uh, uh, like what your feedback is coming from the others but one thing i need to say here that constructive feedback 
like feedback giving and providing is actually sometimes building on trust like try to have feedback who you uh, from a person who you actually trust okay and these are the strategies for ha having an effective group meeting like first of all we have different personality because all of us are unique we have our own personality so when you are trying to have a effect have an effective collaborative group meeting just ask them to think about their personality and make space for others then to have like to to designate everybody's role so that everybody can participate in the group meeting sometimes some dominating dominate the like the some sometimes there are some members who can dominate the meeting but just try to have everybody's perspective so designate some roles to everybody to your every member then uh, write down some ground rules right here i am i'm giving some example of ground rules so that every and and just uh, initiate this ground rule at the very beginning of the meeting so that everybody knows about the uh, ground rule and everybody agrees on this ground rule and everybody can keep this mind and then definitely find a common time meeting here i'm showing just a picture of google doodle so that everybody can see what time uh, are uh, like are there and what, when uh, everybody is available okay so my key takeaways are like start developing a career stage and definitely soft skills complement hard skills balanced hard skills but get little respect and we need to be aware of their importance we need to practice it and we need to be aware of their consequences if we don't have that and this uh, actually helps us to shape our personality to create a positive and productive environment and may, like maintain a healthy and he happier relationship. And also we can improve our soft skills by student-centered classroom, short courses, guided training, and regular self-practice. This is my point, practice, practice, and practice. Okay, so today's seminar, uh, I probably just cover the like, uh, very uh, detail of the soft skills as it's a like and that's why I'm keep uh, giving the iceberg picture and uh, so I this is like thank you to all my colleagues mentors and instructors in USA and Canada and definitely uh, the department of botany and principal sir for organizing this uh, seminar and uh, my all professors and mentors uh, when I was in the Shwedanath College, uh, because I passed out at 2003. So, yeah, that's my talk. I hope you this will help you in future, and I'm open for the question. Okay. I think I am audible, everybody. A very good evening to everyone. Good evening, ma'am. I am Dr. Amit Shah, Assistant Professor in Botany, and the host for mm -hmm. question and answer session today. Uh -huh. First of all, I would like to thank you, ma'am, for giving us such an enriching and inspiring lecture on developing soft skills and importance of mentor mentee system, which we are following in our college, ma'am. It yes. is really a great pri privilege for us and our students to have you as our honorable speaker today evening. Thank you. Okay. Before going on to the question and answer session, uh, there is an important announcement regarding the feedback for the participants. The feedback link will be provided in the chat box just at the end of the question answer session. Filling the feedback form is mandatory for getting the participation certificate. So students, please fill up all the particulars in the feedback form carefully. Ma'am, now with your kind permission, I would like to start the question answer session. Okay. I think your speech has aroused the inquisitiveness of the students as the chat box is flooded with questions, ma'am. Since okay. some questions are similar, I'm clubbing them for your convenience. 
Uh-huh. I feel that some questions are really thought provoking, ma'am. Okay, the first question from a semester four student is, which is more better for study uh, uh, and research in future, applied branches of botany or the classical part, and why? Okay, she is asking which is the better better for studying research, applied branches of botany or classical part, and why? Okay. so that's a first of all very good question so i think that uh, in this century is actually uh, people are more uh, like uh, feeling that applied sciences are uh, like okay first of all uh, tell me from the funding point of view so it's uh, applied science are getting more funding that's for sure so when you are applying for a uh, for a higher study like phd especially you need to have scholarships or funding so and supervisors are getting more funding if they have designed their research toward applied side but here i want to say one thing like basic science is also important so try to find a lab where you can see like they are doing the basic science at least for a part of their research and also doing the applied science so i will see say you say to you that um, try to find the combination of both for your higher studies because molecular because now it's a uh, era of molecular biology biotechnology uh so try to because i have seen here the departments are designing their research or research community so that they can do the basic research as well as they can do the applied research so try to find a lab who who are combining both both uh, part of the uh, study yeah of course she has got one more question other than educational line what are the other career options in botany that we can perceive okay so i actually um this is a this is another good question like i actually now i want to say uh i am available in linkedin so if i uh, i'm not sure like what are the prospect in india uh uh i have to say the truth uh so i can research i can talk to my mentors and definitely give your answer so if you i i am actually going to uh, give my email id in the chat box okay so i think okay, uh, so that everybody know as uh, my email id and uh they can send me an email yeah of course man that yeah. will be very helpful yes 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 and i am also available in linkedin so please send your question because i am so sorry that i am not really uh uh waki bahal of the prospect of botany uh, like what what are the because i know i yeah so i i i'm i'm not going to give you any wrong answer or any answer that will uh, like make you well like mislead or i don't want to mislead you basically yeah so of course ma'am so ha yeah, definitely send me an email and i will i will talk to other people okay yes. thank you ma'am another question is the importance of growth mindset is very useful how to apply and get accepted in foreign colleges okay this is the question by ahmed karim of semester 4 ha uh-huh. ha okay uh, thank you for asking this question ahmed so i think you have to if you want to come to first of all you there are like uh, so many countries and uh, for that like suppose you want to come to us or canada uh there is a very good library uh usefi in i think in the theater road or park street so just first your first step will be 
uh, take a membership in this library because you have to give GRE and TOEFL to come to here, okay? So you need to prepare this GRE and TOEFL and try to um, like go to different, uh, search different universities like uh, here in their career center, okay? Career center, you can type, suppose career center, Uni University of British Columbia or career center, U UCLA. And you can see like uh, they have some material like how to write a CV, how to write a cover letter. So, and definitely I am here to help. So if you want me to uh, check your CV or cover letter, please send me your CV and cover letter. I, I will uh, start from there with you. Okay. Okay, the next question is from one of our colleagues. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's asking, is it possible to change the mindset of students by motivation and inspiration or by setting an example? Uh, yes, yes. Actually, uh, as, an, as a teacher, I took a training on growth mindset, like how to uh, change the growth mindset of our student just to inspire them. And there are some like strategies uh, that by which uh, you can definitely change uh, your student's mindset. And, nice. uh, and one of the, like, as, as, as you were already saying, like one of the uh, important strategies is uh, the language. Like what language you are using toward your student, it will change your student's mindset. Of course. She has got another question. Is it possible to identify between the two different mindsets possessed by people? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, because uh, before actually, uh, before, because what, what example I have, say, sh I have shown you is the research from brain imaging. But before brain imaging, uh, era, they actually have done the research on growth mindset by having the behavioral studies. So from students' behavior, from students' language, you can definitely identify the growth mindset and fixed mindset. Okay. 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 Another relevant question by one of our students is, how to develop our soft skills during the pandemic situation? Yeah, that's a very good question. It's a, though it's a big question, like uh, yes, definitely right. <laughs> because first of all, you have to uh, learn about the soft skills and then you have to put into it in practice. So I think there are um, few seminars, like free seminars in LinkedIn, like time I management, see. leadership, and um, and so you can go there and just have and practice like um, learn from there. Uh, but I I think uh, you can definitely talk to your mentors or professors. They can help you uh, that how to learn or develop the soft skills in this pandemic. But uh, there are some resources actually uh, so that you can learn in online. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I hope the students are definitely understanding the answers as you are explaining them very lucidly. Mm -hmm. Another question is that uh, what are the recent interests and profitable studies in our botany for a good career opportunities in future? Yeah, like this the kind of the same answer. I want yeah, to yeah, which you have already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it's like the try to find a lab or try to find a different uh, like like talk talk to your professor talk to your professor talk to your mentors they actually can guide you like what are the future prospect of botany in india but definitely i i will i will um, i will try to find some 
uh, my colleagues who who knows about this more of uh, a different question by one of our student is when when we are in interview ma'am sometimes uh, we do we are not able to answer properly then our uh-huh. confidence level decreases how will we increase it and look like normal in that time in front of the interviewer yes yes that's a very good question also because actually yes. interview skills first of all i must say you have to uh develop your interview skills and you have to practice like rigorously because like i can say my experience like when i am giving some interview for my uh my like my positions like getting a position here i actually uh learn how to give uh, or um give a better interview so here is another another site i want to tell you first of all indeed.com okay indeed is a very good like at least the basic like what questions you are having about the skill set or about how to learn the skills in go to indeed and indeed is have like at least the basic ideas and there is another site is called the balance career so we are actually using a basic uh, knowledge uh, uh like we are using the balance career um as our basic knowledge and definitely then uh, talk to your pe- talk to the people who have already passed those interview this is the key part okay yeah, of course talk to the people who have already gone through this way and uh, talk to them ask them take an informational interview uh, i think uh, i i actually wanted to uh, talk more about informational interview but i don't have time today so yeah. write write down like informational interview like so that you can talk to the people who have gone through this uh, way before and try to practice your question answer se- se- session with your peers or with your family members or with your mentors beforehand okay ma'am so, so due to the time constraint finally i have got a question ma'am does uh-huh. this uh, meditation or yoga help the students in building uh, growth mindset and developing soft skills what's yes. your view in this uh, regard yes 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 definitely yes first of all definitely yes 100% agree with okay, you okay ma'am Mm-hmm. because i i i love yoga i do yoga i i i love meditation i med- i meditate every day okay ma'am because same from my side <laughs> yes because yeah. when actually like uh, one word i have used in this seminar that is called reflect right mm-hmm. so when mm-hmm. we meditate our mind will like come down like mm-hmm. we cut all the noises and then we can reflect on our life on our strategies and yes. another thing here i actually i i couldn't show the stretch ma- stress management strategy today mm-hmm. but i when i taught stress management i have i have shown another strategy to write down your diary okay yes. to to mm-hmm. keep a keep a book so that you can just scribble your problem the solutions around those problems and then reflect on it meditate on it you will find your answer for sure yes okay ma'am thank you very much so i have almost covered all the questions after eliminating the similar questions um uh, thank you ma'am for answering all the questions of the students with patience i believe all the queries of the audience has been resolved in case of any further query students can mail uh, them to the yes. speaker her email id yes. will be shared in the chat box yes 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 please please email me and obviously ami ekhane ta ami ekta kotha bolte chai je bangla english kono matter korche na ekhane ha to mane jodi tumra student tumra chao je bangla teo likhbe english e likhbe je bhashai hok amake likho nishchoy ma'am আর আমি লিঙ্কডইনেও আছি হ্যাঁ আমার আমার পক্ষে যতটুকু সম্ভব আমি আমার নিজের কলেজের জন্য আমি আমি আমার স্টুডেন্টদের জন্য আমি আমার বটানি ডিপার্টমেন্ট 
থেকে শুরু করে বাকি অনেক কলেজ এসেছে আমি আজকে জানি হ্যাঁ আমি আন্ডার গ্রাজুয়েটদের জন্য আমি মানে যতদূর সম্ভব আমি করব সবার জন্য সব আন্ডার গ্রাজুয়েটদের জন্য অফ কোর্স ওকে ম্যাম थैंक यू जस यू आर ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स सो वी आर रियली ग्रेटफुल टू यू ম্যাম ফর গিভিং আস ইওর ভ্যালুয়েবল টাইম এন্ড এনলাইটেনিং आवर बिलेवर्ड स्टूडेंट्स एज वेल एज स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ द डिफरेंट कॉलेजेस Uh, your talk will definitely help the young budding botanists as well as the students from other disciplines in their future also developing soft skills at a young stage irrespective of discipline or age group will definitely lead to the growth and success of the students i strongly believe that our beloved students have benefited from today's outreach program by no- knowing about the importance of the soft skills i wish them all the best for the future thank you everyone thank you ma'am once again for accepting our invitation and enriching our students now i'd like to re- request ms shonali ray assistant professor in botany to deliver the vote of thanks and conclude the webinar over to you shonali ma'am thank you amitda a uh, very good evening uh, to all of you at the end of this uh, lovely session i believe to shine with our strengths and to overcome our weakness is the key to the success and the skill sets may be inherent or acquired uh, they would always be proving beneficial for a long time to come to touch all the boundaries of all aspirations that our students have or, or as we as teachers also in any profession would have uh, would need that kind of a skill set thank you uh, dr ghoshal to having sharing with us uh, all the inputs and all the uh, enlightening words that you have given these were very inspiring and uh, you chose very lovely words to reflect upon and all those things those will those are really you not know, that uh, key notes and take away for each of us from this session thank you uh, i would uh, really thank our principal sir and our dbt star coordinator for always encouraging and pushing the envelope harder for us to organize such relevant talks and lectures uh, as an outreach initiative we have taken this step for a greater good for one and all and uh, above all i would uh, thank all our listeners uh, bearing with us and uh, taking uh, such lovely keynotes from this uh, lecture i think it will it is so beneficial for all of us uh, at the once again i would thank dr konkona ghoshal uh, and we would uh, like to have you again on this platform uh, konkona i don't know if you remember me i am just a year, yes, year senior yes. yeah yeah yes shonali bhi amar tomake shompurno mai mone ache ami tomake bolte jacchilam tumi bole dile okay thank you so much konkona all the best wishes coming from this way to uh, across the seven seas over there okay so uh, we would love to have you again and she is our pr- she you. has made our department proud a very uh, proud thank alumni of our uh, di- of our college and thank you all listeners everybody for having um, this uh, making this entire webinar a success thank you so much uh, have a lovely evening and um, good night to one and all stay safe thank stay you. healthy thank you so much thank, thank you everyone you. thank you thank you